Domo domo, what is up everybody? My name is Steady, official Jutsu Kaisen translator, and we don't have a chapter this week, but I thought I'd do something a little bit special anyways. Uh, kind of go through some theories, especially with uh, the recent kind of uh, revelations with chapters 117, 116 with Skuna, as well as Hushiguro and uh, him explaining his powers a little bit more. Uh, we've got a lot of exciting things to talk about, specifically with um, Skuna and what his objective objective is and why he's so interested in Fushiguro. So we've got a little theories video here to get you through the two weeks of waiting for the next chapter and uh, we've got a lot of exciting things to talk about so go ahead and take a seat and uh, hope you enjoy. So of course one of the big talking points with Jutsu Kaisen is a lot of the mysteries, right? People having their different agendas and uh, those slowly being revealed along the way, like Geto and kind of fake Geto and um, Skuna and what his objective is as well. Um, and Skuna specifically, from very early on in the series, we've seen him have a very keen interest in Fushiguro. And what do we know about Fushiguro? Of course, he is a user of the Ten Shadows technique. And of course, we've seen a lot about uh, a lot a lot of him using it, these kind of different Shikigami. Um, but we never really understood what the specifics were about. A lot of uh, readers, including myself, did have kind of theories going through their heads uh, that there is definitely a connection with the Ten Shadows technique and Skuna and why he's so interested in Megumi. Also a big hint early on in the series was when Fushiguro was kind of, you know, there's always this talk about Fushiguro and his ace up the sleeve, right? And uh, we could kind of surmise that perhaps it has something to do with him summoning a Shikigami, which uh, is extremely powerful, kind of an end-all Shikigami. Uh, but we never really knew what it was all about, except he did utter the words, with this treasure I summon eight handles. Um, and this was a huge hint, and uh, for a lot of those kind of lore seekers, uh, including myself, I uh, found out a lot of research and this eight handle specifically pointed towards one piece of lore called the Tokusano Kandakara. Now the Tokusano Kandakara or the Tokusano Kamudakara, also read as the Jushu Jinpo, basically all you have to understand is that in English you can roughly translate it to the 10 sacred treasures. Now when you hear 10 sacred treasures in relation to Hushiguro, you think to yourself, okay, 10 sacred treasures as well as 10 shadows technique. Is this a coincidence? And surely it's not. So I'm gonna give a little bit of a lesson on what the 10 sacred treasures specifically are in Japanese lore as well as what uh, their purpose is in basically in terms of uh, the kind of the mythology, right? So the 10 different treasures consist of four jewels, three scarves, two mirrors as well as one sword uh, and more specifically the okitsu kagami which is the mirror of the deep the hetsu kagami which is the mirror of the shore the yatsuka tsurugi or the sword of the eight handles uh, basically the one that we refer to in jutsu kaisen the ikutama the jewel of life the makaru kaishi no tama the jewel of resuscitation the Tarutama, the Jewel of Plenty. The Chikaeshi no Tama, which is the Jewel of Turning Back on the Road. The Orochi no Hire, which is the Snake Repelling Scarf. The Hachi no Hire, which is the Bee Repelling Scarf. And the Kusagusa no Mono no Hire. Whew, that's a mouthful. <laughs> Scarf to ward off various things. So basically these kind of, uh, these 10 sacred treasures are believed to possess a very magical quality to them. It's thought that when you have all of these in your possession and basically kind of present it as along with a incantation, that they have these properties which are able to uh, exercise or purify um, against evil spirits, basically. So very much in line with what, you know, Jude Skysen is all about. But there is also one more little detail that um, is said as well, is that the 
the ten treasures also have the power to resurrect. And this is where the connection with Skuna and Fushiguro comes into play. What is Skuna's kind of uh, objective? What does he want? E even if we don't know the specifics of what his relationship to Fushiguro is, we certainly know that Skuna would like nothing better to be revived, right? So if we are to take this kind of piece of lore with the Ten Treasures um, for its properties, we can surmise that perhaps Skuna wants Fushiguro to use his Ten Shadows technique to revive him. Now this is all just kind of speculation and just kind of theorizing on my part, as well as there are other people who kind of think in this line as well, but there is definitely some significant evidence towards this. I want you to take a look at this. So based on the fact that with the eight handle sword uh, in chapter 117, we finally got a reveal of the, the eight handle sword in his uh, summoned form. Um, but this also kind of leads to believe, okay, so if the the Maharaga is one of the ten sacred treasures, does that mean that the other ten shadows are as well? Now, kind of eagle-eyed uh, fans will have recognized that the Shikigami actually have little symbols on them. And if you've been paying uh, close attention, the different symbols on the Shikigami do line up with the ten treasures and how they're represented in kind of symbolic form. So we have the Mirror of the Deep, Okitsu Kagami, uh, lining up the symbol with the Toad. We have Hetsu Kagami, the Mirror of the Shore, lining up with Max Elephant's symbols on his forehead. We have the Ikutama, the Jewel of Life, lining up with Great Serpent, the uh, symbol that was on his head before he actually got taken out and of course merged into Kon Totality with both um, of the Divine Dog. Now Divine Dogs Black and White actually uh, represent both Tarutama as well as Chikaheshi no Tama, the two jewels, and uh, the Black Divine Dog specifically representing Tarutama, which is the Jewel of Plenty as well as the white divine dog representing the Chikaheshi no Tama, which is the jewel of turning back on the road. Um, now these are all kind of rough translations, so don't take them for exact word value, but the definitely, uh, we, we saw, you know, before they merged into Kon Totality, we saw this kind of the triangles as the kind of the pointing up triangle as well as the pointing down triangle, but as soon as they kind of combined into Kon Totality, even more so, the symbols on Kon Totality's head has those two kind of uh, T marks, the T as well as upside down T, right? So it's safe to say that at least six of the 10 treasures are sort of accounted for, or we can kind of have proof that they line up with one of the treasures, right? The Shikigami lining up with the treasure. But we also do know of two more Shikigami at the moment. Remember, we have the uh, rabbit escape, but there's nothing on the rabbits to kind of, there's no symbol on them to line them up with any of the 10 treasures. And this might be a little bit of a stretch, but the Hachi no Hire, the bee, uh, the bee repelling scarf, is kind of this X uh, kind of mark. And again, like I said, this might be a stretch, but uh, with the rabbits, the way that its nose and mouth kind of lines up, especially the one that Yuji is kind of holding and is, and is kind of up front and center, definitely has that sort of X mark on it. So perhaps this is Akutami's kind of um, creative uh, interpretation on what the Hachi no Hide or the bee repelling scarf is. Kind of the way that um, the eight handle sword is not necessarily a symbol on Maharaga himself, but the fact that you have the wheel on his back as well as the sword definitely uh, lines up with the eight, eight handle sword. And of course, uh, you know, one that we see all the time is Nue, the kind of chimera bird thing that uh, Fushiguro uses in a variety of ways. And there's nothing, um, I went through many different kind of screenshots of him. Um, and there's not, nothing on him to suggest that there's a symbol as well. Perhaps it is kind of under his uh, fur or his, what do you call it, feathers, I guess. <laughs> um, but um, there was one moment um, 
And again, I don't know if I'm overthinking this one, but there was one moment in the Goodwill event arc where uh, if Shigoro used Nue against Momo um, to knock her down from the sky. And the way that Nue kind of appeared then, now kind of kind of uh, stick with me here. It looks very much like the Kusagusa no Mono no Hire. Take a look at this. I mean, look at the way that Nue comes up here and then look at the... Uh, the Kusagusa no Mono no Hire, right? It's, it does look a little bit, not a little bit, but very, very similar, almost too much to be coincidence here, right? Um, so perhaps this is uh, another genius kind of little uh, hidden message uh, by Akutami Sensei to kind of represent that treasure. So if we are to kind of, t you know, maybe kind of stretch out a little bit and take these uh, to be at least eight of the ten different treasures that does leave two more so what what are the two remaining shikigami that definitely um when you read uh chapter 117 you know kind of what maharaga is kind of this ace up the sleeve supposed to be the shikigami the most powerful shikigami no ten shadows technique user has been able to kind of tame it to control it uh so that kind of begs the question well are there even two more powerful Shikigami? And I don't think that's the case. Now, the two that are left over, if we are to kind of believe uh, Rabbit Escape as well as uh, Nue in, the, in its connection with the ten, uh, the 10 treasures, the two that are remaining would be the Hebi no Hire, which is the uh, snake, um, the snake scarf, which coincidentally enough is not the Great Serpent Shikigami. Um, the one that kind of looks like a uh, eight pointed star. Now this one is kind of a little bit curious one because um, if you do remember the uh, the Time Vessel Association, their flag does have this sort of eight-pointed star on it, and perhaps there is a connection there. But that's very much uh, conjecture. It's kind of hard to say. It could be coincidence. It could not be coincidence. Uh, and you know, the more you read Jutsu Kaisen and you kind of know the way that. Uh, Akutami Sensei operates, you're almost kind of like, there's no such thing as coincidence, but who knows? It's, uh, there definitely is something as, you know, overreading something, so. But it's uh, fun to theorize. And this is where it really starts to add even more fuel to the fire of the theory, is that the one that is left over would be the Makaru Kaeshi no Tama which the loose translation is the jewel of resuscitation kind of reviving it it should be perhaps a shikigami but not not necessarily a shikigami that's used to kind of fight or something like that perhaps it's more kind of like a support shikigami and um because you can't have kind of these eight shikigami and all of a sudden the two remaining just being objects right so i think the two remaining are shikigami as well but what we know of mahoraga being kind of a very uh, weaponized shikigami and very strong in that way the two remaining shikigami are probably something a little bit more abstract um the the snake scarf one and would probably be like i said a little bit more kind of support worthy but definitely the the last one the um makaru kaishi no tama the jewel of resuscitation would be the last object needed and once you have that you're able to actually harness a power of reviving you can revive someone from the dead or as we know megumi you know his sister uh, tsumiki seems to be kind of in this comatose uh, comatose state as well so perhaps he uh, will be able to use it on uh, Tsumiki as well but this kind of uh, but obviously Skuna wants to use it this is all assuming that we're kind of on the right track here Skuna wants to use it to revive himself and there definitely is a connection between Tsumiki as well as Skuna in the marks on their forehead you'll will know that the kind of the brief scenes that we've seen of Tsumiki when she's under comatose she has these strange marks on her head that look very similar to what Skuna has so perhaps there will be this big connection between Skuna and Sumiki as well, that if Skuna is indeed revived, that Sumiki will kind of get broken of her, um, 
comatose state or even vice versa. So um, I think we're on a very interesting track here, but this also does beg the question with Fushiguro, does Fushiguro even really know any of this, right? Um, based on kind of what he said in chapter 117, it seems like Mahoraga is kind of the the point where a lot of the, the all of the former Ten Shadow Technique users kind of got to and that was all that they could muster. But that's definitely a detail that we'll have to kind of find out in the future. But it, it, it very, very much is interesting because there are a lot of kind of, not loopholes, but there are a lot of kind of gray areas. And even when he was explaining his powers, we're not even too sure how much he really knows about the whole picture, like how the power is given to him. How does he know these rules? You know, it's like he explained these rules like, yeah, this is what you need to do. This is step A, step B, step C. But you're kind of like, well, how does he know all this? You know, does someone explain it to him? Does the former user of the Ten Shadow techniques kind of pass down these rules? Um, so it's kind of difficult to really surmise what's going on there. Also, I mean, if you really want to get to the nitty gritty and kind of the details, as it stands right now, Fushiguro is actually not under eight. He doesn't have eight Shikigami. If we are to take Great Serpent, who was wiped out, black and white uh, divine dogs who were wiped out, but they were combined into Kon totality, right? So he actually has six and you're like, well, does that mean that it doesn't count as 10 treasures anymore? But I think this might actually be a piece of the puzzle as well, that uh, eventually the, the, the fact that this idea of Shikigami kind of getting destroyed but combining into, you know, uh, this kind of Kon form, perhaps, you know, this is actually one way to use the Ten Shadow technique and uh, a necessary step in order to harness this power of revival that eventually will have Max Elephant combined into Kon Totality, the frog combined into it, rabbits and combine into it, and then we'll have this one entity uh, of, of nine Shikigami, right? But then we add on this final piece, the final Shikigami, the uh, Jewel of Resuscitation into there. Then we have this kind of form of 10 uh, treasures into one Shikigami, and that's when you can actually harness this power of you know, not only kind of extreme uh, purification exercising, because remember the Ten Shadows technique is uh, meant to be used as a tool against fighting curses and cursed spirits, right? But there is also this uh, hidden power of being able to revive the dead. But that's all just me kind of theorizing. Um, this is all just kind of uh, fun things to think about. Obviously, like I said, with Jutes Kaisen, there's all these different mysteries and, you know, I've had my fair share of theories that have been both proven right and been proven wrong. Um, but it's all, it, but it's part of the fun, you know, and Akutami Sensei obviously does an amazing job of letting the reader in on a few of these kind of secrets, but also kind of the best way I describe it is answers uh, answers one question, but brings up two more, right? And always keeps the reader kind of invested in the story and guessing what's going on. And I definitely want to know what you guys think about uh, what's going on in uh, Jude's Kaisen, what your theories are, what you think is going on with Shiguro and Skuna, or if you have any other theories that you want to run by, definitely I'd like to talk to you guys in the comments. But of course, thank you very much for sticking around. We did something a little bit different this week. Um, and thank you very much for uh, spreading that positive juju with a like and a comment. And of course, if you know people, uh, if you have friends that like Jutes Kaisen as well, and perhaps they'll get uh, something out of uh, these videos. Obviously, I do my weekly coverage as well. Uh, thank you very much if you choose to share with them. But otherwise, we will be seeing you next week for chapter 118. I'm sure we're going to be in for something crazy. I think uh, I think we can expect uh, Skuna to be f going up against Maharaga next week. So that should be a lot of fun. But with that, hey, I want to say you know how we do. By the way, I have uh, links to the... Uh, <laughs> to the uh, books in uh, my comments. So if you'd like to support that way as well, thank you very much. But hey, you know how we do. Mata Yoroshiku. We'll see you next week.